Recently, I finally slowed down with jobs. I think we did 20 jobs in, in seven days. So it was a lot of late nights. Thankful for young guys that, that have a lot of energy and uh, gave the work to them. Pray for those guys in, uh, in Florida, or not Florida, but New Orleans, that hurricane coming in. I guess David, they, uh, he's out of Pensacola. They just have tornado warnings there. <clears throat> so they're all buttoned down in place, but it's supposed to be bad. I heard a 15 to 20 foot storm surge in a city that's below sea level. So that's not <laughs> why you would live below sea level. Did, did Miss B ever go? Miss B was supposed to go down, she didn't go? Yeah, Miss B was supposed, it was a birthday Friday, and she was supposed to go down to New Orleans. And uh, so I heard that she didn't go, so that's a, probably a good thing. But uh, anyway, let's, let's open with a word of prayer, and we'll get started. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for, for your goodness. Lord, I, I just pray for those people and, you know, down in our, the southern part of our country, Lord, as they're uh, enduring this, going through this hurricane, almost as we speak. Lord, just... Uh, I just ask that you would help those people and, and uh, help the damage not to be as bad as what it seems that it's going to be. Father, I also pray for the people in Afghanistan and, and our soldiers there as, we, as things are going uh, sideways there a little bit, Lord. Just help, help us to get the people out that need to get out and, and protect our, our, our military. Lord, I also think of uh, outside this, this morning we're having the, the, uh, the, the outreach, Lord. I just ask that you'd bless that. Lord, I just help people to come in that, that need the Lord. And Lord, just help us to have an impact in some people's lives. Lord, maybe someone gets saved and, and uh, Lord, that needs a, needs a church. Lord, just help us to be uh, the, the light that, that some of these people need. Lord, we love you. Just give us a, a wonderful day in Sunday school. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I have some questions here this morning. I finish this quote. What shall it profit a man if... If he gained the whole world but loses his own soul. <clears throat> Here's a his history question. What caused a long intermission in Zerubbabel's work of rebuilding the temple? Zerubbabel was building the temple. Things were going well and then something happened. Yes, Dad. Right, right. I, I, part of that also, that they, they, they wanted to help in the building, and Zerubbabel said, no, this is God's work. And because of that, the retaliation, they went to our exercises, the, the king, and told him they had to stop. One more. Who said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him? Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him? Anybody? Yes. Job. I guess my dad's the one that's been studying his Bible this week. I don't know. All right. Let's uh, turn on our Bibles to Genesis chapter 49. Genesis 49. I've really enjoyed going over these, these, uh, these sons uh, of, of Jacob. A lot of these guys, I, I mean, I, I knew some of their names, but I didn't know that much about them. And today we're going to cover three of them. And, 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 and I looked at these verses and the next one after this is Joseph, and Joseph is, I don't know, four or five verses, and I'm like, man, I don't really want to start into Joseph, but I don't know if there's enough information on these three verses, and uh, I got two and a half pages of notes. So there's a lot, there's, and, and there's a lot of different things about these different tribes that I learned, in, and uh, I don't know, it was, it was exciting to me. Let's go to verse number 19, Gad. A troop shall overcome, but he shall overcome at the last. Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Naphtali is a hind let loose, he giveth goodly words. All right, as we look, um, I'm going to have to wear my glasses. As we look at that first one, Gad, his name means, means good fortune. It, uh, it, means, <clears throat> it means good luck. Uh, we're familiar 
with, uh, if you ever heard of, of watched uh, Fiddler on the Roof, that, that Broadway musical, and, and you, they come to that one song and they sing, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov. I would do the little, I, I can't do the little whatever, what's this guy's name, Tiev or whatever. Um, Mazel Tov is what Gad means, right? So I never knew that before, but, but most of us have heard of Mazel Tov. And, uh, and, and, and that good fortune. And a couple, couple weeks ago in our, in our Sunday evening service, Sunday afternoon service, we watched that movie, uh, God's Not Dead 3. And uh, in the previous movies, God's Not Dead 1 and 2, and the, as well as the third one, one of the key phrases was, uh, God is good. And if you remember, if you call, the, uh, the counter phrase that you would say, God is, God is good, the next phrase was, he is good all the time. And he is. He's good all the time. And we have so much good fortune that, that, that we get to enjoy. If you could put that uh, screen up. So here's a, a picture of, of the tribes. And we're talking about, let me turn this on. We're talking about Gad, which is right there. All right, so Gad's on the eastern side of, of the Jordan River. If you notice here, you have the Ammonites. You can have the Moabites down here. You also have, uh, there's one more tribe. I can get to it momentarily. But, but they're on that eastern time. Gad was a warlike tribe. These guys were, they would be considered the Marines, I guess. I mean, they were ready to go to battle. They were ready to fight. And, but for whatever reason, they were a little slow on on the front end. So they weren't necessarily prepared all the time. That the, a, a, a nation, a, a, the Edomites or whatever, they would come and they would attack. They would come into the land, into the, into the Gad's land, and Gad would, would kind of retreat. And then finally they would figure out what's going on, and then they would advance and they would come back. And that's kind of what it means. They shall overcome at the last. And so, so when they're on the edge right there, you're gonna, you have to defend this border. These people over here don't have to defend those other countries. So it's the outside countries. You know, like in the Midwest, they don't have to worry about uh, um, either from Mexico or from Canada. They don't have to worry about those people invading because they're in the middle. Well, Gad was on that front end. And so what Gad would do is <clears throat> they, want, they want a buffer between them and the next city, between the next nation. And so Gad would, would gather a bunch of their troops together, a bunch of their men, and they would go and raid surrounding cities to keep them aware, to keep them uh, weaker. So I, I've heard this. I'm not sure how, how true this is, but some military minds have, have, have said this. Israel, modern-day Israel, you have the uh, Islamic State Hamas, well, they're not really Islamists, but you have Hamas, which is a, a, ter a terrorist group and relatively small. And, but they're always in Israel, they're in Jordan, they're all surrounding, and, and there are always these battles. And a couple of weeks, a month ago, they had a skirmish going on. And, and Israel, with their technology, with their, their, uh, the information that they can get, their intelligence, they could probably knock out Hamas. But many have suggested that they keep Hamas there because if they get rid of Hamas, another group's going to fill in and perhaps they may have better leadership, they have, may have better uh, uh, military might, if you will, and there's going to be a vacuum, a, a power vacuum there. And so they keep Hamas, but they keep them limited. They, they make sure that they can't... Uh, grow too much and, and they attack them when they need to attack them. And Gad was, was probably similar in the way that they uh, protected the border. <clears throat> similar to Dan. Now, in here, we have Dan over here, but many maps put Dan up here above the Sea of Galilee. So there's differing opinions on where, where Dan is. I, set, I tend to think that Dan is up here, but... Uh, Needs to say. Um, so Gad is a, the Gad would lose some battles initially, but they would, they would retreat, they would recover, and they would go back and they would knock out their enemy. 
He shall overcome at the last was fulfilled during Saul's, Saul's kingdom as well as David's kingdom when the Moabites and the Ammonites were subdued. So we see the, the Moabites are down here. But they, they, they typically traveled up here and the Ammonites. Interesting enough, you know who Ammonites and the Moabites? Their father was Lot. So Lot had the two daughters and, and then they committed incest and, and they had the two sons. So those were the two that were constantly in, in Gad's, a thorn in Gad's side. And they were uh, finally subdued. This tribe, I want you to think of this tribe as a, a, a tribe that would never give up. They'd always keep pressing. They would keep pressing. Just like, just like Paul was talking about in the New Testament, I will press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Always, always pressing. You're in that race. My, my brother-in-law is, runs marathons. And uh, I don't know why, but he likes to run marathons. I, I, I don't know. I just can't run the marathon. But uh, he, likes, he likes running marathons. And, and obviously you have, you have to you have to pace yourself. But at the same time, you, you got to press. You, you, you got to keep going. In battle, you got to keep putting that pressure on because as soon as you let up, that's when potentially uh, you could be defeated. Defeat was never an option. And even in defeat, when even when it was seemingly defeat, they would, they would fight back and, and oftentimes they would, get, they, would, they would win the battle. You know, as I think of a, a spiritual application, as Christians, we're in that same battle. We're in that daily battle. I wrote this down. Our enemy surrounds us. Perils perplex us. The foe is fierce. The battle bombasts us. The way is weary. But you know, our God is greater. Our Savior is stronger. Our captain is capable. Our Redeemer is reliable. Our Father fights for us. Our Lord leads us through the valley of the shadow of death. Our King keeps us and the, and the Divine One defends us. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And, and to understand and to realize that we're in a battle. We're in a battle and we've got to be prepared. We got to press. We got to keep going. You think of those, those men right now in Afghanistan, our soldiers. They're, in a, they're almost in a, they're pinned back and, and, and th they are not able to do what the things that they need to do. And yet they still have to press on. They have to press on even when sometimes it's, it seems like it's going to be impossible for them to, to win. They have to put their lives on. The same is true with us. To keep pressing. Never give up. There's always hope. There's a couple other uh, references talking about Gad, and I, I just want to mention these. In Deuteronomy, Moses blesses Gad, and this is what he said. Of Gad, he said, blessed is the one who enlarges Gad. He lies down as a lion and tears the arm and also the crown of the head. Then he provided the first part for himself, for this ruler's portion was reserved. And he came with the leaders of the people. He executed the justice of the Lord and his ordinances with Israel. Think about that. He's like a lion. He tears off the arm. He takes down the king. He's not afraid. He's not afraid of a fight. Many of the men, uh, the mighty men of David, were from the tribe of Gad. They had that fighter, that, that warrior instinct. I'm going to read in 1 Chronicles 12, 8. It's, it's kind of a lengthy, there's, some, there's a lot of names. But, but God put these names in there for a reason. And I just want to mention their names. So th this is what the Bible says. And of the Gadites, they separated themselves unto David, into the hold, to the wilderness, men of might, and men of war, fit for the battle. They, that could handle shield and buckler, whose faces were like faces of lions. There's that reference to, to the lion again. And were as swift as the rose upon the mountains. And here's the names. Ezer the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmanath the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, and Mahakabani the eleventh. These were the sons of Gad, captains of the host. One of the least was over a hundred and the greatest over a thousand. 
So what, the least of the men of Gad, of those 11, had 100 men underneath them, over 100 men. And the greatest of the Gad, of those, those mighty men, had over 1,000 people underneath his command. And this was, this was the defending David. And Joshua, because of Gad's obedience, because of their willingness to fight, because of their bravery in battle, Joshua gave them that portion of land, which was some of the best land. They were fighters, but this was also a, a very uh, a prosperous land, a very uh, f- uh, fruitful land. And finally, the last thing I want to mention about these, after, the, after, the, uh, after they come into, into the land of Canaan, then Gad went over with the two and a half tribes and they went and they fought against the, uh, the, with the other nine and a half tribes. They came back to their home and, and, the, the, and the, the Gadites, they, they set up an altar. And they, and they, and they built this altar and, and the other tribes heard what was going on and they were completely mortified. And they said, Gad, what are you doing? And they actually got a, a, a bunch of men to go and, and, and search out, what are you doing, Gad? You can't, be, you can't be building altars like this. And Gad said, wait a second. We built this altar to honor God. We're on the other side of the Jordan. The Jordan River is a, a significant geographical divide between the two and a half tribes and the, and the other nine and a half. And, and they said, we built this altar so it would prevent a spiritual divide amongst God's people. We don't want to be separate from you, and we built this monument, this altar, in honor of, of our God. And you know what the name of that altar? This is what it means. A witness between us that the Lord is God. What a great testimony of, of Gad. A troop shall overcome, but he shall overcome at the last. And so when you think of Gad, I want you to think of that, those terms of Mazel Tov, right? That, that term Mazel Tov. Anyway, let's go to the, our next verse this morning. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he, and he shall yield royal dainties. All right, so if we look at, at Asher, Asher is up here, right next to the Mediterranean Sea. And because of their location, they got to experience a lot of things that most, the rest of Israel didn't get to experience. This was a, if you look at it, his bread shall be fat. This was going to be a, a very rich tribe. Very rich. His, uh, his name means blessed or happy. This was a very happy, uh, very, always looking on the positive things in life. Weren't negative. Typically, a lot of times where we're you have a, a negative, uh, you know, we're always looking at the negative. But not, not so with, with Asher. He was, he was always happy, looking at the positive things. And uh, he was going to be blessed with not just, not just with bread, but with the dainties, with the finer things of life. They'd enjoy, I'm put in layman's terms, all right? They'd put in layman's terms. This is, uh, this is how it would be. They would enjoy the luxurious Chevy as opposed to the plain Jane Ford. Pastor listening? <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm teasing. We go back and forth sometimes with that. So they're on the coast, and because they're on the coast, they, they, had, they uh, uh, enjoyed trade, be, uh, being, have trade partners and so forth, and, and sometimes when you're on the, tr- on, on the coast, Pastor was mentioning this in some of the, uh, the uh, New Testament churches in Corinth and some of those, those cities in, in Rome and during the Roman Empire, those port cities, be, with all the trade, everything coming in, you got to experience all the different goods from other parts, parts of the land. Obviously here in the United States, it's, it's so different. We live in a different world today. But if you lived, it typically, you know, two, three hundred years ago, Living on the coast, you're going to get to experience those, those things that I wouldn't necessarily get to experience if I lived in, in the Midwest. Those nicer things. They had more access because of the location. They enjoyed the things that, that kings would enjoy, even though they weren't near on, the, on the king's uh, status. Because of the lo- location next to the sea, 
and, and the way the weather, they had mountains on one side, the sea was on the other side. They were, they were able to grow certain crops that the rest of the country, I mean, they could grow, but they just didn't grow like they would grow up, up there in Asher. The, uh, the, the palm trees and the, the oil, and olive oil was one of the, the main, main things that they would grow. Someone, someone wrote it like this, their bread corn or their, their corn would be fuller and sweeter and better than the ordinary. He shall yield royal dainties, not only for oil, for ointments, but also delicious and excellent fruits. Fit for only really for a king, and yet the common man, the common everyday poor person, got to enjoy this. Again, in, in, in Deuteronomy, when Moses was blessing all the different tribes, he, he wrote this. And of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren, and let him dip his foot in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy days, so shall thy strength be. And even in the, in the hard times of, of, of Israel and during the famine and different things, they would, have, they, would, they would have enough oil, olive oil, that they were able to give to the rest of the nation. Typically, this tribe, it was, like I said, was happy. It was... Uh, looked at the positive things in life. Unfortunately, they were more of a follower than a leader. A follower than a leader. And sometimes that's, that's not a good thing. But they were blessed beyond measure. As Christians, you know what, we are, we are fat. But in that richness, let's not forget that we still need God. And sometimes we do. Sometimes... I know myself, some, you know, the blessings of God keep coming, and, and, and I truly am blessed beyond what, what I ever deserve. But sometimes we get the, in that comfort, and we forget that we need God even more during those times, because it's easier to slide. It's easier to go to, to, to backslide when everything's going well. Let's go to that last last. Uh, Verse. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He giveth goodly words. Naphtali, his name means, means struggle or wrestling. He's one of, the, one of the last sons of, and he was one of, I think it was Bilhah, was, was the, the son of Bilhah. Uh, a hind is, is, a, is a female deer. And most believe that this was a red deer. The red deer is, was common to Europe, to Asia. In fact, it's the only deer in Africa. But it's also uh, in, in the Middle East here, and, and it was a, it's actually the fourth largest deer in the deer family, um, behind the moose, the elk, and the samba deer. I never heard of the samba deer, but, but, but it was a, a, large, a large deer. The, the male can get up to five, over 500 pounds, the female well over 350. But if you look at that, the, the way the description, the hind let loose, this deer is not pursued by the hunters. Neither is it shut up in, in those small little enclosures, but it's wholly left to its own, um, its own freedom to feed on the, on the best pastures. And so once again, we see that Naphtali is, is right next to the uh, Sea of Galilee up there. Uh, but it's kind of a free, enjoys their freedom. This word also hind is, is, in the Hebrew, I mentioned this before, but in the Hebrew, there's, there are no vowels. And this word here is one of those words that can be translated hind, but also can be translated as a tree. As a tree that is shot forth and, and it spreads its branches. It's kind of the, the same root word. And just like in, in Psalms 1.1, I just lost, what's it say? Psalms 1-1, I just lost my thought. Uh, as a trees by the rivers of water, that verse. I can't think of the verse. Uh, but, but similar to that, that verse, uh, it, it, it also could mean that as well. As, you, as we look at the map up there, it's located on the west side of the Sea of Galilee. And it was abundant in luscious gardens, palm trees, fig trees, and olive trees. And it was known... It, its nickname was known as the Garden of Palestine. And much of Christ's 
earthly ministry happened right there. So it, it, we mentioned uh, that one right there, Issachar. He was the 10th son, one of the most insignificant of all the sons. And, and, but that's where Galilee is. Naphtali is right up there. And Jesus spent much of his time up in those, between those two, in those two tribes. So that's a description of the land as a people. As a people. This is the place that you'd want to be. This was the friendly church. This was the place of, of giving and, and loving. And they were swift and expeditious in their affairs. They were lovers of liberty. They were well spoken. They were affable. They were courteous. These would be the, the gentlemen, the gentlewoman of of the tribes of the 12 tribes. They, uh, they took very high pride in, in the way that they spoke. The words that came out of their mouth, they were very articulate. They would utter uh, beautiful words. You know, and those, those difficult conversations that sometimes we would have with, with dealing with people, they could make that, uh, that difficult time and they could use words and they could not be harsh, but they could get their point across in a loving way, and the person that receiving it would would listen and would hopefully would heed what was what was being said. They would always defer to other people. They were willing to to you know be abused and and maybe in language and but they'd always say a kind word back. The people typically had a had a obedience to God and had a heart for him. Now obviously we know this is one of the ten northern tribes and there was no good kings of the ten northern tribes but, but I guess the tribe as a whole much of them wanted to, to, to listen and, and to do what God said. Naphtali was also when, you remember that eleven brothers came out of, out of Egypt and they knew that their brother Joseph was alive. Naphtali is the one that, first one that came to Jacob, their father, and told them that, that Joseph is alive. He was that bearer of good news. And I guess that's a, a great attribute to have, to be the bearer of good news. To be able to go and, and give the good news. To, to share Christ. To share his love. Moses, again, I have mentioned him several times. Moses blessed this tribe, and this is what he said. And of Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. Blessing. In, in 2 Kings 15, 29, again, not, not much is mentioned of, of most of these tribes, but so I, I, I just grabbed verses that I knew talked about them and, and, the, and this is uh, in the days of Pekah king of Israel came Tiglath Pilaser king of Assyria and he took Hazor and Gilead and Galilee which had been Issachar and the land of Naphtali and carried them captive to Assyria All right, so it's just talking about the northern tribes in seven, some, 700 something uh, BC they were taken into captivity the city of Capernaum was in this, was in Naphtali. And if you remember many of the, uh, many of the miracles, many of Jesus' ministry happened right here. Let me read uh, Matthew 4. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. So Isaiah said that Jesus was going to be uh, dwelling and, and having his ministry in, in these two uh, tribes. And this is the next few verses. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, 
for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He started his ministry right there. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw two other brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, and a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left their ship and their father and followed him. I like that. So much of, so much of the Old Testament revolves around Judah. Judah, I mean, that's the, that's the focus, and obviously it should be the focus. But I don't know, I, I really enjoyed learning some other things about these other tribes. Some, some things that are perhaps are insignificant, and yet it's part of the whole. But then as, as, as I look at an application for all of us, we all can't be the preacher. We all can't be the, the, the nationwide evangelist. We all can't be an Apostle Paul or a Peter or James. But we all have a place. And we all can have a, a, a part. Out there, we're, we're having hot dogs. In the grand scheme of spiritual things, hot dog is probably pretty low. It's probably pretty insignificant. But if a hot dog can bring somebody to Christ, I mean, that's pretty big in my, my book. And I hope and I pray that, that some of the small things that we can do, in, although it may be insignificant, we can have an impact on the kingdom of God. We can have the impact on, on somebody that needs Christ. We can be a part of that. And I don't, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about what's going on in our church. I feel, you know, even though COVID's going on, we, we kind of sl slowed down. I feel like we have momentum. I feel like, like things are happening. And, and I'm excited to, to get involved and, and to see some great things happen at Lighthouse Baptist Church. Let's close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for for allowing us to, to have a glimpse of some of these tribes. And, and although we may not know a tremendous amount, Lord, I'm thankful that, that we can have an impact, just like they were part of the 12, or we're part of the, uh, of the kingdom of God, or part of the family. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for our pastor. I'm so grateful that I can serve along so many of these saints that, that, that go to this church. Lord, I just ask that you would uh, be with the, the meeting, uh, the little get-together out there, that, Lord, you'd bring souls in. Lord, that it wouldn't be just about a hot dog, but, Lord, it'd be about a, a person's soul. And, Lord, that we'd have a, a great impact. Lord, I just use that this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we got 15 minutes in the next service.